Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, as we gather together this day, Father, we gather because we know as we sing a song like this that you are worthy. You are worthy of worship. You are worthy of honor. You are worthy of praise. I thank you, Father, for each one that is here, and I pray that the worship service today will be a truly blessed one. Bless each one that has come. See that, Father, each one that leaves has been filled. Be with those that are with us this morning. Some may be away, Father. Some may be sick. I just pray for them, and uh, you let them know that they are in our prayers and they are in our hearts. Take charge of your service this morning, Father. Guide and direct us all. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. May be seated. Again, we do welcome all. It's good to see all who are with us here this morning. In the way of announcements, on your opposite side of the page, uh, you will notice just a few things that are taking place. Uh, next Sunday, after the morning worship, we'll have a time of business for those who can stay. May 3rd, in a few weeks, will be Mother's Day Banquet. This is for the men who will conduct and will be cooked doing the cooking and also the cleaning up on that Sunday after the morning worship. So the men will be taking care of all of that uh, as we do every mother's for Mother's Day Banquet. Uh, so keep that in mind. That's just uh, two weeks away uh, concerning that. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, May 3rd, the first Sunday in May, we will have our Mother's Day Banquet. No evening service that evening. Um, May 7th is the National Day of Prayer, uh, and usually they have something at Griffith Park around lunchtime. Uh, Griffith Park, of course, is an old town right across the street from the post office, and they usually have something there from about 11.30 to about 1 o'clock. So if you'd like to join in, you, uh, you can go there. Uh, the 10th of May, which is the second Sunday in May, will be Mother's Day. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you would like to help with Vacation Bible School, that will be conducted uh, June 23rd through 26th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. And this is from kindergarten through the sixth grade. I do have a sign-up sheet in the back that you can do for that. We are collecting for our Easter offering. Uh, Annie Armstrong, North American Mission, we have collected so far $109. I ask that you give over and above the working of the church. And, do so as far as giving, as far as that, but um, not to uh, but give it over to Bob, uh, whatever will lead you to give uh, as well. Evening service this evening at 6 o'clock, all invited to come for that. If we have service now in the back in the kitchen area, we sing some songs and also what we do now as far as the Sunday evening service is that, we'll, and I'm going, and uh, right now I've just started up, we're going through the book of Ephesians. We'll discuss that and look at that as far as looking at it, so we'll have a uh, more of a discussion type Sunday evening service. Uh, so if you would like to join us, we, we have service, but it's in the back, uh, to where we sing a few songs and also we go through scripture. Uh, so that will be tonight, and we'll continue that uh, Wednesday night as well, uh, 7 o'clock for our Wednesday night prayer meeting and Bible study uh, as well. All are invited to come for that. Any other announcements that I may have forgotten that we need to be aware of? Any other announcements? If not, Al will come at this time and lead us in our favorite hymn, hymn number 62. All the way my Savior leads me.
he was hurting a little bit because he got the staples out. So uh, I don't, you know, so I'm, I'm just assuming he's hurting this morning. Uh, so that's why he's not here, but he got the staples out. So he's hurting to so remember him in prayer, as well as Cheryl Sanders for both of them had recent uh, surgery. So just remember both of them in prayer. Again, anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, yeah, and we uh, don't know the full extent of what with all it, but yeah, remember, remember Faye and, and, and Miss Pauline. Uh, I don't think she rem I don't think she knows any of us anymore. Right. Uh, this is one, uh, unfortunately one of the, of the things that happens with all time is patient. So just remember. Pauline and Faye, uh, even though she doesn't remember us, we remember her. And that's the thing you have to keep in mind, that we remember her. Uh, as far as that is, it's hard to remember her, Gloria, and others as well. Pray for them and pray for the families. We sure will. Anyone else? Just continue to remember each other during the course of the week. Pray for each other, remember each other in prayer, and pray for God's grace, help, leadership, and guidance. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you for all of your guidance and benefits that you so deemed upon us. Lord, as we mentioned this morning in Sunday school, there's a lot we do not know. There's a lot we do not understand of how you work things out and how you indeed have done all things. All we do is have faith in you to know that you're in control and that everything is according to what you have planned. Lord, we lift up in prayer the many, many people that are dealing with different types of physical ailments and physical problems. There are many in our midst. We lift up each and every one. There are those that are dealing with cancer, those dealing with other physical problems like Alzheimer's or just recent surgeries or other ailments. We lift them all up before you and pray for help, for guidance, for leadership, for healing. We pray for those that are having difficulties at work or at home. Be with them and help them. We pray for those in homes, nursing homes and hospitals and in their own private homes. Be with them and help them. We lift them all up before you. We pray for those in places of power, position, and authority. That you'll be with them and help them, lead them, guide them, and direct them. We pray for many, many unspoken prayers, the many things that are lifted up in private. We thank you for all that you have done and are doing in all of our lives. We pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ, friends, family members, co-workers, and even people we've never met, but we may speak to or talk to, we pray for salvation. For this 12-year-old involved in this accident, we pray for him and the family. For Linda's co-worker, we pray for her and the family there and be with them and others as well who have lifted up prayers of concern. We pray for each and every one. Again, we thank you for all that you've done and are doing. Be with us, lead us, and guide us. In the name of Jesus, we ask you. Amen. <clears throat> Let's continue as our comes and leads us our offertory hymn. Turn to hymn number 542. Let's stand as we sing in loving kindness, Jesus came. Thank you. 
we tell people about Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. As the word of God says, once I too have not, had not received mercy, but now I have received mercy. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none that is better than anyone else. All need to hear the message and the words of the gospel. That Jesus Christ came and that he died for men, for women, for girls, for boys. That he died for all who are sinners. Christ came to die for even the simplest of people. All proclaim, I am the worst of sinners, and yet Christ died for me. And he was saved by the grace of God. And in saying, so saying, Paul says, if Christ can save me, he can save anyone. And indeed, what Christ accomplished at the cross, two weeks ago, we saw the death and burial of Jesus Christ last week. We celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ, where he died on the cross, he was buried, and then he rose again the third day. We meet together Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday, or whenever we meet together. And we come together to remember what Jesus had done. We remember the death, the burial, and the resurrection. We remember and we so put into our minds what all the Christ has done and not to forget that indeed because of what he has done we have eternal life we have hope this morning if you have your Bibles turn if you will to John chapter 14 verses 1 through 7 here a familiar passage probably to many but yet one I think that needs to be held after resurrection of Christ because I think like the disciples we sometimes forget the purpose of Jesus coming and also what he accomplished and what he did there is Jesus before his death he comforts his disciples but he also he lets them know what is to happen and what is to take place John chapter 14 verses 1 through 7 here as he speaks to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well, and from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Understand, it has been a week since the death and burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. All of Jesus' disciples were sad. Their hearts were filled with fear. They were beside themselves. They had thought that this Jesus of Nazareth was the one who would come into the world and make all things right. He was the one that was to overthrow the Roman government and set up an earthly kingdom, an earthly rule. All, the, all that went by the wayside when Jesus was nailed on the cross. And then when he died, they placed him in that tomb. It seemed as though when they placed him in that tomb and that stone was rolled in front of it, everything became dark for them. Again, their hearts were filled with fear. They were saddened. They would walk down the streets together and they would say, Oh, what has happened? What shall we do now? 
they have lost all hope. They were expecting someone to come like that of David and restore unto them the kingdom of God on earth. They were looking for an earthly king, not a spiritual king that would last forever and ever. But understand, before Jesus' death, he often told them, I have come that I may die. I have come to die for the sins of mankind. I have come. I was born to die. He often told them concerning what would happen to what it would happen to him, and how one would betray him, and how they would sentence him, and they would beat him, and things would happen to him, and how indeed he even here he prepares them before his death, and he said he's going to prepare a place for them. But you know, human nature is human nature. How soon we forget. How soon people forget. They had forgotten the words of Jesus and what he told them. How soon they had forgotten that indeed he was the hope and yet they lost hope. And they forgot his promises even of what he told them. Although I will be with you always even into the end of the age. Understand that his disciples were all together in a house after the death of Jesus, behind locked doors and afraid. They had doubts. For you see, they had forgotten the words of Jesus. They had forgotten what he had told them. I think today as well, we as Christians, we forget the things of God. We forget what is written in the word of God for us. We don't dwell upon the promises of God and the things of God. We forget that our Lord has told us, I will always be with you. I will always be there. The promises that are in the Word of God, we should dwell upon and we should hold dear to our hearts. As he says, when you are more gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of you. And yet we forget. Things happen, trials come along, testing of faith. And we forget that indeed, even though we may go through the darkest of times, even though things will happen to us, our Lord is ever present with us. Jesus is always there with us. But then again, human nature takes place. Self, or even Satan whispers in our ear and he tells us, what God really say? He hasn't changed much since the beginning of time. Saying a whisper, he said, Did God really say he's going to be there? Where is he now? And understand that even through your darkest hour, our Lord is there. We need to remember the promises of God. Even recite different Bible verses that will help us. Psalm 23. Why is it that David, and David was a man who went through many things in his life, and yet he recorded and wrote down for us and for himself as well as others the psalm that we so know. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green passes. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what did he say? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy God and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou will prepare us the table before me, in the presence of my enemy, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Be surprised how many people forget just that one simple verse or that one simple passage that can help so much to bear. Understand, our Lord is ever present with us. Here, Jesus, He relates to His disciples. He comforts them before He leaves. He even told them what was going to happen. And we need to understand here that truly. Heaven is a real place, just as real as you sitting on these pews. It's real. We haven't seen it, but the Bible tells us it is there. And it's real. We need, we need to understand it. But, you know, we forget. We forget about those things. And we allow other things to take its place as well concerning it. And so we don't lean upon the promises or look at what God has done. Heaven is a place for all believers. Heaven is a place where God dwells. 
What we do need to understand is this. There are promises in the Word of God. And so we look at it. And so what we need today is to remember what Jesus here tells his disciples and that we can put into our hearts today and understand that there are things that are real. Notice, first of all, in verse 2, that heaven is a place prepared by Jesus. In Acts chapter 1, it is recorded to us and revealed in the Word of God that Jesus ascended into heaven and that he ascended up and as he went up, the angels who looked at the people said, why do you look at this Jesus, the same Jesus whom you see go, will come back in the same manner as well. Jesus, the reason for his ascension is a twofold thing. One, he ascended to prepare a place. Jesus tells his disciples in verse 2, In my Father's house are many rooms, and if it were not so, I would have told you, I am going there to prepare a place. A promise. He's going to prepare a place. But the second reason for his ascension as well is to sit at the right hand of God the Father. And the word of God says to make an ascension for all of us. Such an interesting thing. Do you realize that in Acts chapter 7, Stephen, while being stoned, looks up and there before him, as it's shown, just as sure as I'm looking at you now, he looks up and what does he see? He says, I see, I see heaven open and the Son of Man, that is Jesus, standing at the right hand of God. He saw heaven open. So when Jesus ascended, where did he ascend? He ascended into heaven to prepare a place. Heaven is real. Heaven is a house. It's a house. It's not just a tent. It's not just a tabernacle. It says it's a place that has many rooms. And he said he's going to prepare rooms. Interesting that he tells us that. And it's not a temporary place. It's a place that is last forever and ever. Heaven is a dwelling place, a place so large that it will have many rooms. There is no shortages as we have shortages today. It has many rooms and many places in which we have. In Luke chapter 13, the parable of the mustard seed that Jesus so spoke of, he says, what is the kingdom of heaven like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his, in his garden, and grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air perched it in its branches. See, it's, it's a tree that is so big that it has so many places to dwell, and each and every bird that came there had a place on the branches, and so do we as well. But it's a place to where it has many rooms. It's a, it's a place to where Jesus has prepared and have we, that where Jesus will be. It's a place of joy, of light, happiness, and complete holiness. You want to know what a heaven is going to be like? Go back sometime and read from Revelation chapter 21. It gives you a little bit of idea of what it's going to be like and what's going to take place. It says it's a place where there's no more pain, no suffering. There is no more tears. No sin, no death, and no Satan. The devil won't be there. He will be cast into a lake of fire, along with the other demons as well. Since heaven is also a street, it's also a place with a street of gold, showing the purity of heaven. But it's also, the misconception is that heaven only has one name. Do you realize that heaven has 12 gates? And in it it says that it's going to have 12, it has 12 gates. And on each gate, a single purpose made of it. 12 gates leading into the city of heaven. Such an awesome thing that we see that's revealed to us. 12 gates. Places to where we can go. Prepared by Jesus. And Jesus, 
went ahead and prepared a place. Is heaven real? Absolutely. Why do I know it's real? Because I've never seen it. Again, like I said last week, I know it's real because the Bible tells me so. And I have no doubt that what the Bible says is false. Everything the Bible says is true because it is the Word of God given to us by God to share and to tell us here is what it's going to be like. Jesus prepares and He goes and ascends up into the Father and He's preparing a place. This brings us to the second thing. To prepare a place for whom? Notice again in verse 3. He goes and prepares a place for you. For his people, for the, for the disciples. Notice he says, I'm going to prepare a place that, and I'm going there to prepare a place and prepare a place for you. And notice the promise. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Such an awesome thing that we see. I don't know of any other religion that has that promise. No. You can, do, you can search every religion in the world. This is the only religion, the Christianity, those of Christ, that has his promise. Understand. He's going to prepare a place for his believers. Here, the Lord Jesus puts his entire reputation on the line. Either you believe him or you don't. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for those who are his own. Now, who are the people of God? Who are they? Here, of course, he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you talking about his disciples. Who are the disciples of Jesus? The disciples of Jesus is anyone who truly believes in him as Lord and Savior. Anyone, even today. Anyone who puts faith and trust in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, one who has truly repented of sin and looked to Jesus Christ as Lord. They are disciples. We are the disciples of Christ because of what Christ has done, because of our faith in Him. This is what we need to understand. Every disciple, truly disciple of Jesus, is one who puts faith and trust in Jesus Christ. In other words, what Jesus told Nicodemus there in John chapter 3, he must be born again. Oh, but Nicodemus said, but how can one be born again? How can one enter the mother's womb again? You're mistaken, Nicodemus, Jesus basically told him. You must be born from above by the power of God. Believing in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You know, we, we often say that in life two things remain constant. Taxes and death. There are other things as well, but those two things remain constant. You pay your taxes or you may face death. And death comes to all people. But what happens after death? What takes place after that? Well, put it in plain English, as the, as the Word of God says. Make it plain. Make it clear. Two things happen. There's only two things. Either a person goes to heaven or a person goes to hell. That's it. Not everyone's going to go to heaven. It's unfortunate because you're going to have many people who do not believe in Jesus Christ. You're going to have many people who do not and have not repented of their sin. You're going to have many people who will believe in false teachers and false people like we have in, like today. You have many false people who are telling people there are many ways in which you can get to heaven. There are many ways in which you can get to God. There are many other religions that you can believe in and still get there. That's not true. That is false. Jesus even said it. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes unto the Father except through me. Now, does this mean that people can't? Yes, they can, but they have to put their faith and their trust in Jesus. Because Jesus Christ is the only one who died on the cross for sin. He is the only one in which we can get access to God. He is the only one in which we, be, we can be cleansed because of what He has done at Calvary. It says, by His blood we have been cleansed and made whole. <coughs> so He's going to have to do what? To prepare a place for us. For the true believers, when we die, 
we go to heaven. We depart this life, and we are there with Jesus Christ. We are there with the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, here it's revealed to us here as Paul so adequately like writes by the power, by the grace of God. Notice he says, therefore we are always confident and know that, that as long as we're at home in the body, and as long as we're here, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and I would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for things done while in the body, whether it be good or bad. You see, understand what, we, what he's saying here. See, none, no one, who is a believer of Jesus Christ will be separated at the time of death from Jesus Christ. When we die, we go up, and there we are with the Lord Jesus. There we are in heaven. There is no, there are no, in the graves there are no Christians. In the grave, in hell there are no Christians. Nor is there any place in between as some religion so Think. When you die, it's either heaven or hell. Again, there are no Christians in the grave, there are no Christians in hell, and there are no Christians in between waiting and hoping to get into heaven. Because all that's been done already through Jesus Christ. Because again, because of Jesus' death and burial, and because of his resurrection, we have the victory over death. That's the promise. That's the promise that, that is read for us. That's the promise that's given to us in the Word of God. That because, of, because He was victorious, we too, because of our faith in Jesus Christ, can also be victorious in Him because of what He has done. He has given this victory to us. But it's been done because of His shedding of His blood that He had did, that He had done at Calvary. In Hebrews chapter 9, in verse 27 and 28, notice the proclamation so given in here. Just as it is destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people and he will appear a second time not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. And then over in chapter 10 of Hebrews as well, it's mentioned and revealed to us. Therefore, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. See, not, not by any works that we do, but by the blood of Jesus, a new and living way opened up for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed in pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for, we, for he has promised, is faithful. Understand, we need to hold on to the promises of God. We need to put our faith in Jesus Christ and what he has done, and what he said will happen as well. Here he lets his, he lets his disciples know, even before his death, listen, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to die, but understand it's not the end. I'm going to heaven, and I'm going to prepare a place. And that place I'm going to prepare, it's going to be for you, and you can say it as for you, as far as you and any and every believer in Jesus Christ. Is there room in heaven? There is a whole lot of room in heaven. And there won't be any shortages whatsoever. Jesus has gone into heaven to prepare a place so that we can have a place forever and ever and ever. But notice even the most awesome thing, if that's not enough as well, that he prepared a place for you and I to dwell in. Notice that the third thing that we see here is that heaven is a place prepared by Jesus where God dwells. It's God's place. God will be there. When we get to heaven, we will, be, we will see God face to face. We will stand before him. Why is that? 
cause no longer to allow sin to keep us separated from God. No longer will our sin be a hindrance as to where we cannot look upon God. This is Moses could not look upon God. This is Elijah could not look upon God because of sin. When we get to heaven, we will be considered sinless because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we will be in heaven where God dwells and look upon God, worshiping Him and praising Him in His truest sense because we've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is what he tells Thomas here. And Thomas says, Lord, well, we don't know where you're going or how, and how can we know the way? And notice in here, see, so many people get stuck on just one, one area. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that's true. But notice he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. See, there's no difference between God the Father and God the Son. They are the same. They are equal. Why was Stephen stoned even more adamantly when they were stoning him? Because of the fact he says, I, I, I see heaven open and I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God, showing equality with God. They knew what Stephen meant when Stephen said, I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. That he was calling Jesus God who came in the flesh as it is reported for us. Understand, when Jesus died and when he rose and he ascended into heaven, he ascended into heaven and he was going back to where he came. Stand next to the Father. Jesus was going to the Father's house and to prepare, to prepare a place for all who truly believe in him. He is indeed the essence of God. As he tells Thomas, if you've, seen the, if you've seen me, you've also seen the Father. For we are one. There is no difference. And there were no difference whatsoever. The way to heaven, to God's place, to where God dwells, is found only through Jesus Christ and what he has done. It is not of good works. It is not certain religious ceremonies that we do. Nor is it a baptism or of taking of the Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper of Communion. Nor is it of costly gifts, saying, I give this to the Lord, I give that to the Lord. It has none, none of that has to do with it. We do those things. We are baptized. We partake of the Lord's Supper. We come to church on Sunday. We give unto the Lord. We do these things because we are saved. Because of what the Lord has already done in our hearts and our lives. We do these things because the Lord impresses them upon us to do it. And we want to do these things because this is what God through Christ is leading us to do and wanting to do. And to remember the things of God. And remember the things that Christ has done. There is only one way. <coughs> Many people do not like this way when Christians say there's only one way. I know Oprah Winfrey doesn't like it. I know others don't like it as well. I'm sorry for them. But this is what the Word of God says. And I'm glad that Jesus Christ came and He died for our sin. And I'm glad that through Him we have redemption. And they can have redemption as well. They too can be saved. All they have to do is put faith and trust in Jesus Christ. See, salvation is simple. It's not complicated. If you look at other religions, they make it complicated. Do you realize if you look at the other religions, what they make you do, and the hoops that you have to jump through just in order to maybe make it into what they call heaven? And you, then you may not make it. Because there are certain criteria as well that you have to make. And Christianity is so easy. Christ received sinful men. Make the message plain. Make it clear. And it is. It comes because of what Jesus Christ has done. Because of his death on the cross, he died for my sins. He died for your sins. You acknowledging, hey, I am a sinner. Just like David. Remember David? What did David acknowledge when Nathan showed him that he did wrong and he sinned? He didn't blame everybody else around like everybody else does today. Instead, he says, I have sinned. I have sinned against God. I have sinned against thee and against heaven. He acknowledged his own sin. 
He didn't still continue in it. He went to do the same thing today. This is what how simple it is. Coming unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is always reaching out to sins. There on the cross, two criminals, two thieves, one on each side. One went to heaven, the other one didn't. Why not? Why didn't the other criminal go to heaven and why did the other one go? Because one criminal, one thief, he put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. The other one could have, but he did not. I don't know why not, nor do I know why this one. I get, all I can say is that one did and one did not. This is the gospel. This is how plain and simple it is. And the, and the thief on the cross, when Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise, there was no moment of a baptism. There was no moment of anything else that he, that he had to do that was required of him other than putting his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And it's evident that that thief on the cross put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, remember me when thou come into thy kingdom. Simple words of faith. Truly believing in Jesus Christ. How does one go to heaven? By simply putting faith and trust in Jesus Christ. How is one saved? By simply putting faith and trust in Jesus. By knowing he indeed died on the cross for my sins, and that by his blood I have been cleansed and made whole. The question is, we have celebrated this past Sunday, Easter. And you know, for us as Christians, every day we celebrate Easter because we serve a living, risen Lord. He is not dead, but he is alive. Muhammad is still in the grave. Hare Krishna, still in the grave. Gandhi, still in the grave. Many other false religions and false prophets. You go there in the grave and you can, you can dig it up and their bones and everything else are still going to be there. But Jesus arose on the third day. We come together to remember what Christ has done. Rely upon the promises of what Jesus said. Behold, you trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. I go and prepare a place for you. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior today? Let us stand. Almighty God, we come before you. We thank you for all that you have revealed to us. Lord, if there is anyone here this morning whom you have spoken to, revealed yourself to, and needs to come unto you for salvation, I pray that by your grace, by your power, and for your glory, they'll come unto you at this time and this hour. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to hymn number 290. I am thine, Lord. Are you truly, Jesus said, do you truly belong to him? The Lord has spoken to you today and revealed to you by his power. You come as we sing all four stanzas. I am thine, Lord. 290. <coughs>
such an awesome promise. Dwell upon this. Tell the dwell upon this and let not Satan take this joy or happiness away from you that you will have forever and ever and ever. Dwell upon it and know the promises of God. Though I am with you always, even to the very end of the age, our Lord is ever present with us every day, every day and every moment of our life. He is always there with us. Take hope in that. Also what David says, and even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with us. Our God is with us as well, every day. Hold on to the promises of God. Just as much as you hold on to something that you, you that, that, that more valuable to you. Or even this is valuable. It's good. Good for the heart, good for the soul, good for the mind. It helps us not to be down in the dumps. It helps us keep on going. Know the promises of God. Even if it's just one. And relate this to other people as well. They all go through many things, trials, tribulations, things may happen. I may be I may cry, I may be sad, but I know my Lord is with me each and every day. Relate this to people. <clears throat> to know that in Jesus Christ who is alive, that we have this hope. I pray God's blessing upon each and every one. We invite you to come back tonight, 6 o'clock, for our evening worship. Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday, 7 p.m., Bible study, prayer time in the back. Come, worship, and discuss, and look at the Word of God and grow in spirit and in truth. May God bless each and every one. Now, lead us in the closing prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come before you at this time, I just thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for your Word. And Father, I thank you for each and every brother and sister in Christ that is here. I pray, Father, that each one has been blessed. And Father, I know as, as I think and well that how we can come together and we can pray together and we can sing together, we can worship together, we can fellowship together, that how, Father, that gives me strength to go out and the world for another week. Father, you, all strength comes from you, but Father, it is a love that we have for one another that helps us grow. Now, we see you and each other. I pray, Lord, that you'll bless each one in this area. I pray that, Lord, as each one leaves, they will truly feel that they have had an experience working today with you. And Lord, be open and want to come back and, and worship this evening, not this evening, Wednesday, if not able, Sunday again. Father, thank you, and just be with us as we go out separate ways and watch over us, take care of us. I pray that each person here does truly, truly look to you for leadership and guidance. This is my son's name we pray.